I'm sorry, I didn't have my microphone on. This is the Committee of the Hall, March 4th at Beverly Middle School. First um, call to order. Uh, why don't we start with the pledge real quickly, and then we'll get to our order of business. Uh, Ms. Robinson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we've just concluded our curriculum instruction student life meeting where uh, Dr. Churachek gave us an overview of the um, efforts for the district with the coronavirus and she's bringing forward some information that the governor had released today. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, thanks. I, I um, appreciate the everybody um, finding the time to join us here tonight to, for a meeting that you know was not scheduled previously. But um, given the circumstances, I think it's important for us to come together and take a look at. Um, we have a number of uh, foreign trips or domestic trips um, that are planned for the spring. And today, the governor, well, over the past two days, but today specifically Governor Baker announced that he really urged all schools, higher ed and high schools, to reconsider any of their travel that involves overnight stays. So I'm here really to kind of just talk with you. I can provide you information about what we have planned, um, what the destinations are, and, and really just to embark upon a discussion around, um, around those trips and, and what everyone is thinking in terms of um, whether or not we need to cancel those trips. So um, I can tell you that right now um, we have two, uh, well, actually, we have a number of trips that are planned, and I'll just go through them one at a time and let you know which ones they are. We have a trip planned um, for, and I believe they're all April vacation, correct, Betty? No, not all. What's the Spain? Spain is right before April. Okay, so we have a, a group of 16 students who are scheduled to travel to Salamanca, Salamanca, Spain. Um, that is scheduled for the week before April vacation, which is um, April 10th. 11th, 12th, something around around that time. Um, we have a middle school, eighth grade uh, group of students who are scheduled to travel to Puerto Rico um, during April vacation, the week of April vacation. <coughs> we have um, uh, that's April vacation. We have a group of students who are scheduled to. Um, it's ROTC, scheduled for a physical fitness competition in New Jersey overnight, um, 12 students, and that's March 26th through March 28th. We have uh, an overnight trip to uh, Virginia for the um, band, 108 students scheduled to travel to Virginia for the band. Do you know when that is, Betty? Uh, yes, sorry, I have it right in front of me. That, that straddles Straddles April vacation. We have 18 students scheduled to, to travel to Quebec City um, from April 16th to April 19th. So those are the overnight trips that we have. That doesn't also include uh, the students who qualified for the international competition to be held in Nashville um, coming up in the next month as, as well. So DECA. that's the DECA, yeah. yeah. Oh, and we also have the United Nations, Nations right? Uh, no, there is no Oh, nature's class. I did. Yeah. And then uh, additionally, we have uh, t to consider uh, sixth grade students attending nature's classroom um, coming in the next month or so, too. So, um, and I think you'll be hearing more from Mr. Conan about that one in the next coming school committee meeting. But again, that's just on the horizon. So, I mean, this is, the, we are not the only district that's grappling with this. Districts across the Commonwealth are all grappling with what they do um, for their foreign travel or for their domestic travel. And, you know, I think. At this, I, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions, and or Betty will join us if we have any questions. Just a matter of housekeeping. I forgot to announce we have uh, Miss Lorinda Visnick by telephone since this was an emergency meeting that we called to order. Um, okay. Do we have questions, Miss Robinson? Um, I have a question about um, how has this been handled in the past for any. Situation. Well, I'm in my eighth month, so I'm not really sure. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I don't. I don't know of um, times when Beverly has canceled uh, any of their foreign travel. I do believe in other districts there have been times. I, I believe there was a trip in Manchester, maybe eight to ten years ago, that was canceled. Um, 
a volcano, something like that. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, it, the, I, I did bring a copy of our policy just in case anyone um, was wondering. Our policy states um, from the beginning that, and I have to just find that piece of paper. Um, all, all proposed foreign exchanges uh, <coughs> proposed and approved by the school committee. Um, and then it's the school committee or the superintendent reserves the right to cancel trips to up to departure and recall trips in progress if they believe there is a potential danger or to students or other reasons deemed appropriate by the school committee or the superintendent. In the event that a trip must be canceled, the school committee and or superintendent will endeavor to make the decision at the earliest date possible. So that's what our that's what our policy says in regards to foreign travel, or any of our trips that are out. Right. And that was the only thing I found in the policy that um, that referenced it. I guess I have some questions, um, and, and I think I recall us asking when we approved these various trips. Um, what the plan was for travel. So obviously Spain, they would be taking a common carrier like yeah. in Flight. Pub public airplane. Yeah. Uh, in Puerto Rico as well, since it's yeah. off the mainland. For our junior ROTC, are they planning to use public transportation or chartered? I believe it's, uh, I, I'm not. They're using a van. They're using a van. A, one of our vans. <clears throat> um, and then the Virginia trip for the band is using chartered buses. Is it our buses or chartered buses? Chartered. Bus. chartered. Betty, why don't you come up here? <laughs> okay. For the Quebec City, similarly, I believe chartered we buses, talked yeah. about chartered buses. Nashville, those students. So would I would. Be they're flying. flying. I believe the plan would be that they're flying to Nashville. Okay. I don't believe those flights have been booked yet. And I don't know. Again, Nashville, besides coronavirus, might have a few other things going on. So I'm not really sure. Um, that's an intern. So that's also uh, the concerns that have been risen, uh, that have been arisen, arising on my list serve is that it's also an international competition, not knowing, you know, I mean, the students will be coming from international locations to participate. And unfortunately, they had the tornadoes yes. down in this yes, they did. <coughs> developing situation still. Um, and then for our nature's classroom, those are charter buses. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we have at least seven different groups of students that would be staying away from home. Some of whom would be flying. There's a, one other concern that was raised by uh, a parent question, but it is a, it is one, and, and Betty and I met a little bit this afternoon, and um, we don't actually have specific answers yet, but that what comes into question, too, is if, in fact, they were to go and a situation would change rapidly within the country they were visiting, how would we, what's our plan for getting them home? What is the quarantine? What, you know, there's a lot of, of questions and um, that have been raised. And again, we would need to come up with a plan and have that ready if in fact we were gonna be looking at that, so. Madam President? Yes, Ms. Visnick? I have a question. Go ahead. May I ask again, I apologize for being remote. <laughs> hear Governor Baker's statement again? Uh, yes, Governor Baker made a statement that he urges all higher ed and high schools to cancel all trips um, involving international travel. I think that would be the quote from the article. It, that was at a conference, press conference at around 11 o'clock this morning, I believe. Hey, thank you. Mayor Cahill, go ahead. Thanks, Madam President. Um, so we sit here March 4th, are we? The first of these trips sounds like it's about a month away. Spain's a little less than a month away. So what's the departure date on that? I'm sorry, I was just trying to find the contract I don't have. I think it's I think it was March 27th, but I'm not positive. Okay, okay. So the, can I just, the other complication is that that parents are being asked in the next week to submit additional payments. Um, so, you know, in terms of, aside from the policy saying that we would give them the earliest decision, there are other like sort of timelines along the way where they may have paid half of the money and they're expected to pay the other half of the money in the next four or five days. So, so then along those lines, I guess, 
that's the case with more than one of the trips? Yes. <clears throat> Primarily the two biggest trips in question right now for me are the Spain and Puerto Rico. Um, so can we have more details on each of those trips? Departure date, um, what's the next payment due date? Uh, yeah, so the Spanish trip, they, the next uh, payment right is March 10th, it's $1,500. That essentially covers the airfare. They're, they're kind of paid up for the travel agency that prepares their stay at Salamaca. They're, they're going to a college and taking courses there. Um, th so that, and then the, um, I'm sorry, what's the other trip? Oh, I have the Puerto Rico. Okay. So the Puerto Rico, the departure date is April 18th. Um, um, that's within, that's 45 days. Um, <coughs> And they can cancel between now and 31 days pre-departure and lose 50% along with the 99 non-refundable deposit. Um, and um, at this point in time, a number of students have already paid in full for that. But um, that, that, So each trip is with a different private company. The um, company that the Puerto Rico trip is with is called Explorica. And um, they actually are still reviewing their own policies around this. I'm, uh, as I said, we're not the only district that's facing this. Um, and they sent, they actually, I believe, sent a, uh, a message out today to um, the students that were registered, letting them know that they're continuing to monitor and continuing to watch it. Um, and so, um, I, I mean, I think the next payment is due for them. I think they have to pay, um, I don't, 13 students have paid in full, and others still have three or $500 to pay in. So those payment plans are. But it, the, the real deadline for them would be if they f don't cancel within 31 days, they lose all rather than just half of their money. And their departure date is April? 18th. So they'd need to cancel by March 17th? Yeah. Okay. The reason I ask is, I, I you know, I we just don't know what, the guidances are going to look like mm -hmm. in a week, in two weeks. And um, while I understand and appreciate the, the, the benefit of making an early decision if one needs to be made, mm -hmm. I'm just, as I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm thinking, what if we don't make more decisions than we need to tonight? We'll be together again in a week. I mean, we, we pulled... You know, we called this meeting, or you, you called this meeting in, in a matter so, of hours. And the main reason for this one was the, that the Spain trip has right. a deadline of payment. And Next so we week. can look at these at a case-by-case -case basis. We can make a, you know, I mean, th th those are all options. Mm -hmm. um, I'm mostly concerned about parents being asked to put another $1,500 down um, within the next four or five days and a decision to, uh, you know, to, to be made. And so... Um, Madam President, if I could, that, that's right, that's a big deal. Um, has there been communication, Mrs. Taylor, with that group of kids and that group of parents today? Uh, you know, in, in not, not for the whole group. We've been talking to some individuals, students and parents that have had questions. And basically the response is we were going to look into it and get back to them. Um, the biggest question has been if my child goes to Spain and there's a quarantine or something, how do I know they're housed? How do I know they're getting medical care? How do I know, how will you get them back? Um, the, uh, the travel agency that works with on the Spanish trip does have some provisions for medical care, but it's not very explicit. Um, and so, so we didn't have a lot of explicit information. We've been doing our research right now trying to find out. And so that departure date again is March 26th? I think it's March 27th. March 27th. Yeah. So that's the closest. That's three and a half weeks. Yeah, and, and that that money. deadline on the on the big payment. It's a major payment. Is fifteen hundred next week. Yeah. Right. Um, so you're it's you're the final here. Payment, the fifteen hundred. I'm sorry. It's the final payment. The fifteen hundred. So you're here with a recommendation that we cancel that trip. Well, I, I, and and I mean, I, I'm not I trying to put at words this point in your mouth. Time, I have. So I have again. I have my own reservations and concerns. Right. Um, I don't have an answer for parents right now as to what would happen if there was a quarantine situation in Spain that occurs in the next two or three weeks. That that departure date is very close. Um, so I have reservations. Yes. Right. Ms. Coelho. So do we have any concerns from the parents n not wanting their kids to go? 
We had one student withdraw from, uh, has already withdrawn. It was originally 16 students, now there's 15. And then the other concern was what's going to happen if something happens in Spain. And we've received a couple, at least three communications via email from parents looking for answers more than um, anything at this point in time. Ms. Coelho? So if we as a committee cancel those trips, mm -hmm. we're canceling it on them. Do they get all their money back or no? No, that's the other thing. Um, the uh, It's called Travel and Education um, that organizes the... The, the, the classroom, the, the university visit while in Spain will give a voucher that can be used within a year. However, the flight is a totally separate, um, it's done through AAA, so that's a, that's a separate cost. That's actually is the 1500 it's for the flight. Nine people have already paid for it, and, and the rest would need to pay. And that does not allow any refunds or any returns. Yes, Ms. Biznick. Uh, my very long drive to my destination that's keeping me from being there. Uh, this, one of the lead stories on the news is that um, our congressional uh, delegates are working on getting um, the airlines to agree to give refunds um, given the extenuating circumstances. So we can hope that that comes to fruition. I, I, I understand that's, that's nothing in hand right now. However, um, for me, the, the concerns far outweigh the money, um, and, and I simply uh, offer that as a very recent news story to say that, you know, maybe that particular part of not getting your airfare may in fact change. Uh, people are working on getting that part to change. Thank you, Ms. Fisnick. Mr. Milady. So I, I know I'm going to jump around a little bit as I typically do with my ADHD mind, but Exploric is a Massachusetts-based company, and I know that doesn't apply to the Spanish trip. So considering it's based, I think it's based in Cambridge, and the governor of the state is asking us not to send kids. Um, we had this conversation in my job with EF. You figure that these companies have insurance policies. This is a very unique circumstance. Hopefully it's the only circumstance these kids are going to have to go through, um, that they'll be getting some or if not all of their refunds back. Uh, I think that you know, the nightmare situation is we, we let the kids go, situation changes, and all of a sudden you know, you're the parent of a child in quarantine in a foreign country. And the, the intention was good. Um, but sometimes, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So I, I, I feel like my gut is saying, like, you know, I'd rather err on the side of caution. I, I think taking the case by case and giving these parents and these students an answer early on, um, if it's if it's bad news and we decide that's what's the case, like knowing that where our answer is coming from, and then looking at let's say the other trips with foreign travel and. And maybe the trips that are further on, just kind of wait and see what happens because this is this is ongoing. It's developing, and you know we're we're our hearts are all in the right places, and we're we're taking this very seriously. We're looking at it with caution, but you know I, I think having the governor say today, I mean he he's requesting. He didn't say requiring, and I think that language was was like re, kind of reading between the lines. And it, so that's where I'm at. Thank you. Um, I wanted to just offer. Um, a little perspective when we had students going to Costa Rica and the Zika virus was um, prevalent. Um, I think that there was a lot more information about the risk factors, the consequences, the treatment plan. And I think in this particular case, um, there, there's less known, there's more risk. And um, I, I do believe, it, at least for the Spanish trip, I think a prudent decision would be to cancel the trip, not to allow the students to leave. Yes, Ms. Biznick. I would make that motion. To, uh, the motion would be to cancel the Spanish trip. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Would we like to have some more discussion? Mayor Cahill. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam President. So just to fully understand, <clears throat> How many students are currently signed up for the Spanish trip? Fifteen. Fifteen. And you said some have paid in full. Uh, yes. Uh, nine was my understanding. 
Nine have paid in full, so the remaining six need to pay by next Tuesday. By March 11th. The 11th is next Wednesday. Is that oh, excuse me. 10th. March 10th. March 11th is the parent meeting. March 10th. Okay, because I thought I heard you say the 10th yes. or at least. So, so the rest have to pay by next Tuesday. Yes. Um, the expectation based on their agreement with the travel agency is, is or that the company is that they would get a voucher for what they've paid for the stay and the coursework. That's correct. It's, but that's not the flight. Right. And do you know who the what airline the flights with? I, Iberia, but it's this is all charted through AAA. Okay. And so the expectation with the what they paid for the flight is there an expectation? What 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 do they what do we know that they know? Uh, I um, Iberia will not refund. So those nine, those nine would be out fifteen hundred as of now, with this. Yes. Do they have the right now, to have some insurance? Some people paid twelve hundred because you could have started paying. So some people paid a paid little earlier. less, but in any case, right. uh, at a minimum twelve hundred, and if the people haven't paid. They're, they're, the cost of the air flight right now is fifteen hundred. Okay, and and I, I thought I heard. Do, do we know whether that any of them purchased flight insurance and whether that would cover something like I, this? I don't we don't know. know. That. Yeah. Hmm. I would hope that we would endeavor to work with the travel agency to continue working with our congressional leaders um, to make the students whole, to make sure that they have the opportunity. It's such a shame to remove such a, a valuable opportunity at this point in, in the students' lives. And so anything that we can do to give them the opportunity at another time. Yeah, I, I, think, the, I think the only concern is students who are seniors this year. In theory, they get a voucher as well for the exact same trip. Mm -hmm. Or uh, the travel agent said to me um, they could sell it to another student. That's good for a year. So you think it's transferable? The voucher would be transferable? That, for that's what she said. She said if they sold it to another student. Yeah. Need more discussion? Mayor Cahill. Dr. Trocher, could you read the um, the school committee policy again ar around cancellations? Um, well, I'm, I'm looking. It's into it's in it's number two under procedures. It says the the school committee and or superintendent reserves the right to a cancel trips up to departure and b recall trips in progress if they believe there is a potential danger to students or other reason deemed appropriate by the school committee and or superintendent in the event that a trip must be canceled the school committee and or the superintendent will endeavor to make the decision at the earliest date possible and, and it says parent le parents slash legal guardians will be required to affirm that they have read and consent in release form and they that's what they do with the travel agent um, and understand that the school committee and or superintendent rever reserves the right to cancel and or recall a school sponsored field trip the parent will sign and acknowledge <coughs> and affirm that he or she may lose any or all of the funds expended for the trip parent or legal guardians will receive a copy of the district's policy regarding the administration of medications as it pertains that's goes on and do we know that that has all taken place we have the, the this is the packet that yeah I have yeah. I have the, their contract with the, with the travel agency with travel and education um, which um, states that um, I uh, can unconditionally release the Institute for many claims for damage injury loss or expense of any nature resulting from events beyond control including without limitations acts of God war strikes crime terrorism sickness or quarantine government restrictions or regulations this release also applies to any losses arising from the use of any vehicle or from the selection of or em or from any admission by any host family bus or car rental agency steamship airline Railroad, taxi, or tour service, organize a hotel service, hotel restaurant, school, university, college, or other firm, agency, company, or individual, unless it is caused by the gross negligence of the institute. Um, 
There's a second part that says, I agree that if I become ill or inca incapacitated, the institute or its emergency assistance company may take such actions as it considers necessary under the circumstances, including securing medical treatment for me and transporting me to the United States. I release the institute from any liability relating to this medical care. I also authorize the institute to take care whatsoever action it deems to be necessary. And in my best interest, including trans transporting me out of the host country or back to the United States at my own or my parents' expense, in the event of a political unrest or any other unforeseen event or condition, if the Institute incurs on my behalf any costs not covered by its general liability insurance, I and my parents agree to make the immediate repayment upon my return. I understand the Institute provides insurance coverage for my benefits while in the program, including limited health and accident insurance while on Spanish soil, and a comprehensive U.S. emergency medical coverage and trip cancel cancellation and interruption policy that can, must be purchased separately. I acknowledge that it is my responsibility to understand the limitations of this coverage and agree that the Institute is not responsible for any uninsured losses. <coughs> So, Madam President, if I could, so mm -hmm. Dr. Trochik, you had read our policy mm -hmm. and said that the parent or guardian would sign that they had read our policy. That would be Do we parent. know that that was a part of the paperwork that the students and their parents received and so was I, signed? I believe that's part of the original packet that was presented to the school committee when you approved the overnight field trip. <coughs> there was an original packet, field trip form the very the first day. one that is incorporated. So all of those things are incorporated in that field trip form. I don't have those copies here with me right now, but if you recall when we do an overnight field trip, you get a packet mm -hmm. and it has all of that information <coughs> incorporated in it, including... So that all would have been collected in, his, yeah. mm -hmm. in our, our possession as a district. I think a consideration before us is not only for the safety of these students who are traveling, but when they do return. I mm -hmm. think that we have in Tewksbury even, very close to home, as well as in Rhode Island, some cases where students have returned. Mm -hmm. And it, it poses a significant amount of challenges. Mm -hmm. not, not that there isn't people walking around Beverly right now that haven't been on international travels. Ms. Coelho? Is uh, the, instead of canceling it outright, is there a way that it could be postponed or closer to the end of the school year? Well, I think that's what the voucher would be for. I mean, but but I I don't think the flight will be able to be changed. I mean, I, I again, I don't I we don't have the specifics on what agreement that flight had. But in terms of the voucher, that's what they are offering. They're offering either you know, so you get a voucher, so we could reschedule the trip for fall of next year. I doubt it would be later in this spring that we'd be able to do that. But you know, we we could reschedule it, and those students would then just use their voucher for that trip. So uh, with the with the, with except for the seniors who are on the trip, who um, I actually do know of a student who was a senior at at Manchester High School at one point in time when a trip was canceled. She, not from this particular company, but from actually from EF. And they canceled the trip, and she did go use her voucher and was able to still, you know, participate in travel. But, you know, that's, that's the only assurance that we have. Um, and, I, and I, again, I believe that I'm hearing, um, so, you know, I'm hearing very similar responses from other superintendents um, that their travel companies are, have the same set of guidelines and they're offering the same sort of compensation around the trip of, of the voucher to move it, moving forward. Ms. Robinson. Um, is it at all possible to ask for an extension to have the paid, the, for paid in full um, from the 10th to maybe a later date? So that maybe, if, if, let me grab my computer because I just the teachers just sent me the latest she heard from the airlines, and I'll read you their exact language. Uh, Iberia will not be refunding the deposits for the flights. Um, th th this is travel and education. Our Spain office is already financially obligated for housing as well as logistics and other aspects of the program that not, cannot be recuperated at this late date. We'll be providing one-year credit voucher for the amount that is left after deducting non-refundable deposits and payments to our providers. I will know that exact number once the offices reopen in Spain tomorrow morning. This is the travel agent. Um, so, 
the, the only thing we've heard from the airline is there's no refund. I'm trying to see if I have anything additional here. Again, this is from the same travel agent. Um, at, at, this team, at this time, there seems to be no real risk pre uh, presented by COVID-19 to destinations serviced by TNA during the 2020 travel season. Um, I, you know, I won't read you the whole thing. She sort of gives a background on, on how it, you know, they've dealt in the past with HIV and influenza and bird flu and things like that. Um, and they just basically as they say they keep an, they monitor this they keep an eye close eye on it there's no other further information so the only only thing i've heard is the airline because it's it's sort of set up separately they they won't well i'm i don't know if, if it's because they're set up separately but it's iberia airline through triple a and they won't do a refund so i i guess my my question i i think we would have to check into the to the company to see if we could get an extension from the 10th and maybe even if we could just have a week to vote on it like because things could change drastically well, in a flights week. Flights generally if there's like a hold on those seats I don't know that they will hold them. Which I I think the I'm trip guessing, they, once they're in Spain I think yeah. we could negotiate it yeah. but, uh, but my my impression was both talking on the phone with the teacher and the in the travel agent and from this is that the flight is a separate thing right. so and I just want to reiterate that I have some very strong reservations about sending our students over to Spain yeah. I mean in, in light of the governor's guidance <coughs> in light of how quickly things turn that's just I just kind of want to go on record as yeah. saying that I, I have some significant concerns and I apologize for anyone that that upsets but um, the yeah. responsibility of them going coming back returning to the high school integrating back into classrooms for you know so then are we going to leave them out for 14 days do we or should we not or you know I mean there, it raises so many questions and I understand that the complications but at this time I have some pretty strong reservations I think I saw Mr. Milady first just to it? kind of like put more things into um, a clearer picture and to go to support Dr. Trochek's reservation. So according to The Guardian, there's 22 conf 222 confirmed cases in Spain right now. The number is expected to go up. And we're talking about a country that lives and breathes football and they're canceling like football games. And they're encouraging people not to go to these mass public gatherings. And I also share your reservations for when these kids come back and everything was fine. Like I don't want anyone on that trip to have now a stigma if they you know sneeze or cough a certain way and all of a sudden they're going to be you know ostracized for that mayor cahill thanks madam president yeah i i think i think the your reservations dr trochik are shared i i know i share them i think we're all angsting here because we see we see a a dream trip not happening Great for kids and and we see a likelihood that a significant amount of the money that's been put down by these families isn't coming back to them. I think that's that we're all kind of struggling with that. I, um, that. I think that that's why I asked earlier, and and I and I heard it from Mr. Milady too. You know, um, how few trips can we act on tonight? Right. And, and, I, and, and then I, where I, do we go next? So I actually do. I, I, I'm fine, and I would understand and, and encourage maybe even a case by case because we do have another meeting on March 11th. And so I, I just counted back. I think March 18th would be our next deadline to really with consider the, for the Puerto Rico the Puerto trip. Rico trip. Um, yeah. And then there's the bigger conversation about the travel, the domestic travel within the United States. Um, you know, the DECA, the DECA competition is one that, yeah, yeah. I, as we sit here, I got two emails regarding the DECA <clears throat> competition. So, uh, you know, I mean, right. those, are, those are all questions. And I think we just have to case by case make some decisions that are best for kids. And in everything we do, it always has to be about what's best for kids. And if, if I could, Madam President, it, I'm I'm ready to vote on this one. But I do want to say that um, the Puerto Rico trip, for example, we we understand now there's a deadline of mm -hmm. March 18th. Yeah. We probably should advise those families don't do anything if there's a if you if you have a balance owed, wait. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to pay yes. it until the 18th, and we and, may and thank well you for that. I, I need to take action in the meantime that we're not taking tonight. I thank you for that because I also think that um, in addition to a decision, people are looking for guidance, and so I'd like to be able to to say, all right, here's where we're at right now, and and perhaps also um, 
between um, Mr. Posca and Mrs. Taylor and myself, put together a grid. What are our deadlines? Where are we going? When when really are the you know drop dead decision making times for us? So that we um, the only thing I just want to caution you is it does say that we, we do tell parents we'll give them the at the earliest possible date would let them know about canceled travel. I think this is a very unusual situation, and um, you know so I, I just I just wanted to share. And and so just to wrap so. Whether it be Puerto Rico, whether it be students who have qualified for DECA nationals, anybody who hasn't put their credit card number down, mm -hmm. I just advise them to wait. And, and we'll, you know, we're, we're all, I think we're all sitting here hoping that something's going to change in the course of, of the coronavirus and something's going to change in the advisories that come our way. And at the same time, it may well be that in a week's time or two weeks' time, we'll be voting to cancel other trips. Thank you. Ms. Ferretti. Yeah, I just want to add that I, I also shared the reservations. I, I think that as a parent, we can certainly understand the, the frustration of putting money out and, and losing the deposits. It, you know, that's, it's, we're talking big chunks of money. And all, obviously, as Mayor Cahill said, the uh, anticipation of the students going to these trips, it, it's a, a lifetime experience. But I, I think... Above all, we're responsible for the safety of, of our students and not just the students we're sending on the trip, but the students that they're going to be coming back to. And um, it, you know, as for the trips that are not international, I, going forward, would like just more information on what are places like um, Nature's Classroom and what are they doing to sanitize their uh, their facilities, as well as what other groups are, are visiting prior to mm -hmm. us sending our students there. Um, you know, even though it's not overseas and international, it, you know, it could be that weeks prior to our kids going, they had some other groups that mm -hmm. were possibly at risk. Um, so just as we move forward and contemplate different trips, that's some information that I'd like to have on, on these places, just kind of what precautions are they taking and what other groups are they hosting. Yeah, and we'll, we'll do our best in, to be as vigilant as we can and bring forward whatever information we can share at, you know, as we go forward. So. Yeah. Thank Ms. You. Visnick, I don't see any other hands at the table. I just want to check with you before we entertain a roll call vote. Any more questions? I'm fine. I'm fine with you. I'm all set. Okay. So ready to roll call vote? <coughs> Get the mic. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Ms. Quayle? Yes. Ms. Visnick? Ms. Visnick? I'm having a hard time hearing the roll call. Is that me? Yes, yes that's you. <laughs> I vote yes. <laughs> Ms. Abel? Yes. Ms. Ferretti? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Yes. Mayor Cahill? Yes. Mr. Mullady? Yes. Great. Thank you. With seven votes in the affirmative, we have decided this evening to cancel the Spain trip. Okay. And, um... Uh, Mrs. Taylor, we'll go back and you'll share that with Mrs. Rodolico and the families. Yeah, we'll we'll um I'll I'll share it with Ms. Rodolico and then we'll craft a message to the families and please share. Our, questions. I think our collective disappointment that the opportunity is is not going to happen. Thank you. At this time. And so then moving forward, we'll um, look to the March 11th agenda and add any more conversation and discussion about future trips. I think that that sounds like the prudent approach. So next week this One time. Meeting. Yes, <laughs> very long. <lovely. laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate um, that you coming in for the meeting and um, and the thoughtful discussion. And um, you know, I, I this probably is one of the worst votes that I've had to sit and take. So I understand um, that. And you know, hopefully moving forward, we'll see. I don't know that we've ever. This is unprecedented in terms of what we're facing as a school district and as a community. And so I appreciate all your support as we work through making sure that we keep our kids and our staff safe. So that's what's important. Thank okay. you. So that was our agenda for this evening. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mayor Cahill. And unfortunately, Ms. Harrison, we need a roll call vote. Doing adjourn. it again. Two for two. Ms. Quayla? Yes. Ms. Fisnick? Yes. Ms. Abel? Yes. Ms. Freddy? Yes.
Ms. Robinson? Yes. Mayor Cahill? Yes. Mr. Milady? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Bev Cam. <laughs>